we are going to need a pencil and a pen and an eraser and a paintbrush and some paints. But let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's do it. So this is a rough grid of the way the artwork should be to go onto a mug. And I've drawn this out in pencil, pressing very lightly so that I can erase it later. So this is one of the sort of the main artwork areas on the front of the mug. And I'm thinking I'm going to want the eye right in the middle like that. And then this kind of classic kind of iguana shape like that. And And then the mouth is coming sort of behind the eye like that. And then we want this to loop down. So this is called the sub tympanic <laughs> node or something like that, a uh, plate. Uh, sub tympanic because up here, this is the tympanic um, block or whatever it is, which is the ear basically. So sub means it's below. And then we're going to want some bits going on there. Um, we'll have the. That'll do it. Good. And then I'm gonna what I'm gonna want to have is is a big sort of curling tail around here so that uh I can put some text in under there. So I'll have that sort of roughly sort of coming around like that. And then we'll have um hands and Oh, let's do it like that there. And then that's the back leg coming there like that. And then we have this kind of weird sort of folds underneath, aren't they? The bits which they frill out. Frill, I think that is actually the word, isn't it? <laughs> this is a frilling illustration altogether. Like I say, this is going to be designed to go on a mug and T-shirts too. And I wanted to have a slogan and I couldn't think of anything about iguanas except say how to pronounce an iguana because I know some people call them iguanas, uh, but it comes from the Spanish iguana, iguana. So it's iguana. So I'm going to start inking the eye and I'm going to do this kind of, <laughs> kind of sly kind of shape like that. And then underneath it will be the eyeball. And if you watch quite a few of these things, click up here um, to, to see more <laughs> on the playlist with this Animal ABC thing. Um, and you will see that um, I've done uh, quite a few things. And I quite often sort of get right in there with the eye because that's where I feel you really sort of connect with the character. And this is more of a character than uh, uh, what an iguana looks like, because an iguana doesn't necessarily look like this, because I'm sort of characterizing it a little bit as well. And we'll bring that. I think it might even give him a little bit of a <laughs> like that. And a nose. It's going to be something like that. And you can bring this down here to this, like I say, this is the sub tympanic plate, I mean, sub tympanic something. And as this is the tympanic bit, which is the ear. So it's kind of hears through that point. What's really interesting with iguanas is that on the top of their head, they have a third eye, a parietal eye. It's a kind of little node thing again, um, which um, can sort of sense daylight and, and will sort of be aware of, um, let's get these sort of frill bits in there, will be aware of um, sort of things flying overhead, coming into attack so that it can <laughs> get away quickly. So it's sort of, it sort of acts sort of like a third eye. And let's bring this arm around there. Let's have a few little kind of folds and things there. Um, and we're going to want these sort of long clawy things like that. With claws on the end. 
and we might sort of have another one there one two three four five that's good and then i'm going to do quite a crumbly slightly crumbly kind of line coming down here and then all the way around like that and then mm, that leg's not looking quite big enough i don't think so i'm going to give that back leg a little bit more oomph and so that will be the thigh and then this will be the coming down to the ankle knee ankle and then again we're going to want these great long <laughs> toes coming out there and there'll be claws on the end and i'm really kind of thinking as i'm drawing thinking how this is going to fit in with the um the, the whole mug business and that's then going to be here i want to get this quite evenly narrowing getting kind of narrower and narrower and narrower but we don't want to point just a little kind of blobby bit like that and then uh, i'll speed through this bit i think because i don't want this kind of little crinkly bit on the top <laughs> and then having done that then we're going to put in the the crest and here I'm going to take my time again and just get these done all really nicely so we're going to be going up but it's not quite a point it's just slightly slightly curved at the top we want them to be quite thin and quite close together and sort of quite large quite long all the way down to kind of the, the base of the tail and you can see when i talk <laughs> they start getting a bit sort of plumper at the top because i'm not concentrating properly so i'm just going to go all the way to the end now and then here they get to be a bit smaller and a little bit more closer together <clears throat> so i'm going to turn the paper as i'm doing this because it gets too confusing otherwise and again we're wanting to get these getting kind of closer and closer and closer together and you want to take your time over these don't rush them because then they'll become a scribble i know in all my practice sketches they have just ended up as horrid scribbles <laughs> practice sketches practice sketches well yeah i'm sort of trying to work out like i say it's not i'm not trying to draw a an iguana i'm trying to draw some kind of caricature thing which means getting to understand them a bit and thinking how on earth am i going to draw all these <laughs> all these spots and every time but they're scales aren't they really and every time i draw those big scales along the mouth they kind of look like teeth it's just not right and um, and just kind of working it to f try and get it to fit within this uh, design. Um, and just sort of doing drawings and versions and versions and versions and versions and trying to turn them into a bit of a character at the same time. Uh, this is <laughs> while I was watching the TV last night. Oh, yeah, sub tympanic, some tympanic shield. And then there's the tip and panic shield, the top one, and the parietal eye. Um, and then I suddenly thought, I'm doing these too big. <laughs> and, and in fact, I think the one I'm doing now is probably too big, but we'll see how it goes. So I, I kind of scaled the whole thing down, and I still wasn't happy. And then I scaled it down even more, and I started to become more happy. And I thought, oh, well, I'll do this. I've actually done it <laughs> too big. But maybe doing the very small one has allowed me to um, sort of build up a bit of confidence, um, which maybe that's where I'm going. So the, I just reached a point where I, I think, oh, just let's make this video. Let's do it. <laughs> let's not talk about it anymore. You know, you can research too much there's a word for it isn't the, the um, you can get research fatigue in the end just you know just doing too much and now what to do from here this is the really difficult bit so 
Um, I think these are actual little kind of little teeth kind of things. But I'm going to do this. Actually, I'm going to switch to a number two pen, which is much lighter, much thinner. Oh, that's a one third thinner, isn't it? If it's going okay for three down to two. And, and I think I'm just going to end up doing quite a lot of sort of cross hatchiness to get this feeling of scales. I think if you're going to do scales, you just kind of got to do them all or hardly any. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of hatching up the side like that. Um, and then I hope that this hatching will give a feeling of scaliness like that. Um, and here and I'm not <sighs> I'm trying to think what I'm doing here so really there should be sort of big scales around there we're going to want some heavy dark hatching in there I think a lot of this hatching in in these big areas is going to be suggestive um, and then we'll put some more of these kind of spots in there like that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just keep going with this kind of <laughs> suggestion of scales, but the suggestion of scales giving also a suggestion of shade and shape and form too. So. I'm going to put them in there like that and then the other way and quite often when you're doing this sort of thing it just looks terrible while you're doing it and you think no <laughs> but you just have to keep going it's that resilience thing again I was talking about last week I think you have to keep going because it does pull itself together and at some point of the drawing, it always looks really, really bad. Um, and, and I think I'm going to have to go all the way around the tail. So I'm going to go and kind of wiggle my way around the tail here like this. Slightly changing the angle as I go. So let me start from here. So as you, as you turn around, you're just slightly changing the angle. So it's always sort of going off at the same angle to the outside line, if that makes any kind of sense. And then we're going to want to do it the other way around. And and again, try and get a bit of a curve into that line, and then that will help give some sort of sort of round shape to the uh, to the tail. And again, I'm not doing these all straight to the edge. I'm leaving a little gap. Um, because you'll have kind of ambient lighting coming from underneath um, on the sort of on the curl like that. Um, I think I should have a bit in there as well and spin that around like a record. And, and I'm just going to do these kind of. Mm, Kind of little marks aren't they but I hope they're going to give a kind of a feeling of um, <laughs> scales now this is this here I'm just feeling very unconfident about but we'll see how it goes now I'm going to get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and, thinner. Um, and then here again I'm trying to get a little bit of curve into these lines like that and then I think we might need a few kind of bits like that something's telling me not to do any more except perhaps in the claws down here and then also I'm going to put some shading in to bring the claws forward and sort of off the surface 
And this isn't any particular breed or type of iguana because I haven't gotten into that kind of detail <laughs> in uh, my research. Uh, it's just sort of a feeling of an iguana. So, so I have a bit more of a yellow in there and a bit more green like that. Um, and so I'm just going to start painting and see what happens. I'm going to leave a little bit of um, a little bit of white there for sort of shininess. Um, and we need to leave that tympanic doodah. <laughs> And oh, I'm I'm painting over them, aren't I? I'm not being careful enough. So, <laughs> so let me go around like that, and then I'm going to leave a little bit of white down there for shininess. Um, and again there, a bit of highlight. And on the leg, a oh, bit in there. Um, and then we'll work our way around the tail. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a white line on the tail too for kind of shininess there like that. And then we've got the frill underneath here as well. I'm sure there's lots of jokes about how thrilling it is and <laughs> stuff like that, but I'm not going to uh, thrill you with those today. <laughs> so, um, now while it's wet, then we can sort of um, start dropping in some stronger colour. Uh, so it's the same colour, but just not uh, with less water in it, basically. Um, uh, and that will help to sort of add light and shade. So, so it's strengthening the hue, which is the pure color, rather than adding gray or black to make it a shade or white to make it a tint. Uh, but I will probably be doing that <laughs> shortly. Um, I'm going to get some yellow in the eye like that. I think you see me do this frequently is to drop a bit of sort of brown in up above it like that. Um, and now my favourite Naples yellow. I think I'm going to paint this bit here. I just realized that I'm not using watercolor paper. <laughs> um, because I've run out and I got a fresh pack in the house and I thought I'll go and get that. And then I went in and I forgot and I got something else while I was there. And then I thought, oh no, so I came back and I went out to get it. Oh no, I forgot it again. So I'm adding a little bit of sort of pinkiness here just to kind of get some shape to these um, nodes. <laughs> plates, plates, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and then about the third time I went into the house to get the um, some new watercolour paper and forgot, I think I just thought, oh, to hell with it, something's trying to tell me, just do it. So this is painted on um, sea white cartridge paper. Um, and I, you, I think you can get sea white stuff in the States and around um, if you look on Amazon, but I think you might have import duties. I'm not quite sure. But if you live in the UK, sea uh, white of Brighton are fabulous. I'm not paid by them or anything like that but I get a lot of my supplies from them because they are extremely good value, extremely good value. And um, you, you, you get a lot of stuff for your money with, with them. They're really good on papers. 
and um, and sketchbooks and things like that and you know if you live in the UK chances are if you've been to school <laughs> and they gave you a sketchbook at school chances are it was a C white one because they do a lot of stuff for schools and uh, things like that school supply art supply now oh, I'm gonna have something a bit more yellowy green in here I think I might have to just zip through these actually while I'm doing this I should do a bit of a sales pitch shouldn't I and because I'm making all these mugs and t-shirts and things like that so that you can buy them and support this channel. <laughs> I'm sort of hoping that you'll see these things like, oh, that's really neat. I'd like that on a t-shirt. And if you, uh, if not, then let me know what, you know, what I should be putting on t-shirts and mugs and things like that. But this is just a way that I've started making mugs and t-shirts as a as a way that you might like to support this channel I know I was really surprised when I started doing this that the, the price that they suggest you sell at because your fans will want to support you etc it was so much so I've had to take it I've taken off a lot of the profit just <laughs> not very business like uh, just to make it seem make the make it seem like the prices are a bit more a bit more affordable because some, some of them I sort of feel at the price that they suggest I think I wouldn't buy them myself that's just the price they are I can't change that well I can change it but then there won't be any profit and there's no point doing it <sighs> so if you would like to support this channel by <laughs> buying a t-shirt or a mug <laughs> click up here and you will sort of find um, a link to my merchandise store where there's sort of lots of things there's the whole animal ABC I've been working on so far and if you're watching this in a year's time or something hopefully there'll be the whole animal ABC will be available but I'm doing a letter a month at the moment uh, a letter a week at the moment I should say right so I was using a little bit of kind of purple in there and I think I might Oh, I don't know. I just added a little bit of purple to the purple to the green, which sounds like uh, a Prince song. Uh, and I'm gonna try doing that. I'm not sure about that by putting in these sort of scales. Oh, I don't like that. So I'm just gonna paint those out quickly while I can didn't like that but I do need to do some work around the eyes and make those eyelids darker and around underneath the eye like that that's a bit better and I think we can put a bit more underneath the <laughs> the mouth part there and these tympanic plates Plates is the word <laughs> I keep forgetting. Um, and we can maybe kind of try and get a bit of. I'm experimenting now, really, to try and get some of this scale effect, but I'm not sure about it, really. Hmm. So. Next thing is to work on this, the ground down here. Again, again, this is Naples yellow, which is my sort of go-to just in case. And we'll have a bit of, bit of burnt sienna thrown in just to kind of muddy the whole thing up a bit. I've got to touch up those uh, claws there because they've gone a bit. I haven't really painted them much, have I? Um, and um, we're going to want to do these kind of pebbles in there like that. So this is kind of wet on wet at the moment, and and, and when you when it's wet and you put some a darker colour on it, it kind of fades into it. So I'll just get my hair dryer and dry it, and then when it's dry, then you can 
sort of add sort of spots and bits of texture getting that sort of edge to the you know the brush stroke um, like that and then something a bit darker um, let me set that a bit darker so I'm now using my other favorite which is neutral tint and again I'll say if you haven't got neutral tint then you can get something like burnt umber and French ultramarine and sort of mix it to this kind of bluey gray which is really useful color for shadows and things like that if you use black it just it just punches a hole in the whole picture and it just dominates uh, the picture and the watercolor is a very subtle medium um, and you, you don't want to have anything too dark in there else it will really do weird things Again, I think a bit more. Um, I'm thinking really probably all I need to do is just sort out those back claws and then just make sure there's something in the claws so I'm going to colour in there and again make sure that the shadows are in there like that. and then probably some shadow on the claws themselves actually aren't they like that um, and shadow underneath on the soil like that and I'm not going to touch it anymore I'm going to say that's it so thanks for watching go and get yourself a mug or a t-shirt and uh, make sure you are subscribed to the She Rona Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.